Hi, it's Paul from Model Builder International. Don't forget to subscribe to the video channel, the link is down there. Then you'll get notified of all the future videos for reviews, builds and the competition videos. So today what we're going to have a look at is a brand new kit from Flyhawk. This one is a 1 700th HMS Legion. Okay, so what we have is we've got the masking set and we also have the uh, 1 700th HMS Legion as she was in 1941. Um, so let's have a look, see what we get on the back. There's nothing on the side there. Um, let's put this right away. Um, Prince of Wales and Bismarck in 1 700 with which Flyhawk have in the process of uh, making. And on this side, there's just some links to, I think, online stores. And inside the box, we should see obviously the kit for HMS Legion, but this is the deluxe edition, so there's also um, metal rods, um, brass bowels, and a couple of photo etch sheets. Um, so let's have a look inside. Um, and there's a bit of a change for flight this. It's a top opening box. It's pretty snug. So what have we got inside? There's a picture. HMS Legion. That's that's the Ark Royal. HMS Legion was there when she was torpedoed, and she eventually uh, sank. And on the back we've got um, basically a bit of history of the L-class destroyers. And a bit of her history as well. She was only a float well, in in service for what just over a year, I think. Um, she was sunk in 1942 in Malta and scrapped after the war. Um, but she saw quite a bit of action. So inside we have instructions. Um, the Fly hopes usual one long sheet of paper with many steps on it. So that all looks quite straightforward, sprue layouts. Um, ten steps, colour coordinate colours where needed. Colours are in Mr. Hobby Tamiya and White Ensign. Um, reasonably straightforward um, paint guide, mostly solid colours. The instructions look good as always. And then in here we have, let's see, a bag with small frets. These are the ones that all clip, or clip together to protect the small parts. Box with some um, bigger parts in there. Then we have in here I'm thinking will be the whole heart. I can open it up. There we go, there's whole top, whole bottom. So even though it says the whole bottom is separate, so even though it says full hull on the um, on the box. You could do a waterline one if you wish to as well. Um, so we'll have a close look at those when we look at the steps as well. Lots of nice detail on that uh, on that deck there. You can see the walkways. And then inside here we have some bags with threads in them, or sprue, sorry. Um, I'll open those in a second, have a quick look, see. And this here, I lift this up. This is the what makes it the deluxe set. Two sprues, mostly railings by the looks of it. Uh, davits, the ship's boats. Um, like that could be a radar. I'm not sure. I know uh, Legion was used for some radar trials. Um, yeah, so oh, and there's. In here is the instructions for the 
for the best. So I'll quickly open these up and have a quick look see. Okay, so I've taken those, these sprues out. This one is obviously, as usual, lots of really fine parts on fly hawk kits. There's the funnel cap with uh, it's uh, what hollow see through. It just has the individual parts on top of it, so you can see inside. Here's the other part. See the ship's davits are the boat's davits are there. But, um, that should be good. And then here I can see the, the funnel has been slide molded. It's hollow at the top. More superstructure. Uh, ships, the masts, they look good. And right, so what we'll do is we'll go have a look. We'll go through the instructions both for the kit and for the photo etch part and we'll have a close look at those. What I'll also do as well is pull up the instructions for the uh, for the masking set as well and we'll have a look at those so you can see exactly how those work but it does look like it will make painting the deck and those walkways a breeze so let's uh let's go on the next step hms legion was launched in november 1939 and spent 1940 being outfitted um, during 1940, the plans for her and three of her sister ships were changed and they were fitted with twin four-inch high-angle high mountings. And these four ships were reclassified as anti-aircraft destroyers. She was commissioned in December 1940, but after the trials, a few, default, a few faults were found and she was under repair until January 1941. Um, she was then um, spent most of her time, well, to start with doing some convoy escort, but she's best known for working in the Mediterranean. Um, she was on the Malta convoys, escorting aircraft carriers and other big ships as they shuttled aircraft to Malta. Uh, that's why she was there when HMS Ark Royal was sunk, and that explains the, uh, the box art. Um, that's quite a well-known photograph. And she took on over 1,500 survivors from the Ark Royal. Uh, she continued running um, escort operations in the Mediterranean and in March she was uh, escorting a merchantman and she was damaged by a near miss from a, a, an air attack. Um, she made it to Malta on one engine and basically she was beached there. She was towed and tied up alongside and then while she was awaiting repair um, she was hit by two bombs and seriously damaged. Her forward magazine exploded and she rolled over and sank in the harbour. And then she was um, cut in half in 1943 and attempts to wanted to refloat her, but none of it worked and she was um, broken up in situ, which was completed after the war. Okay, so looking at the history of the L-Class in, um, in kit form, it's pretty sparse. In fact, nothing in plastic as I can find. All I can find is a white ensign model 1700 HMS Lafori, um, and a couple of other uh, well um, kits as well in 1350th and 1200th scale, all in resin, and that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm thinking this is the first time anybody's uh, done an L class in plastic. Um, so it should do well just based on that. If you want an L, a highly detailed L class in 1700, then um, your wish has come true. You can now build at least the four anti aircraft destroyer versions. Obviously, it wouldn't be much of a stretch to fly Hawk to do the, the, um, the other ships of the L class that didn't have these high, ang high angle um, main armament. So, getting back to this particular kit. Inside the box, we've got uh, 202 plastic parts on nine frets, plus 12 other parts as well, usually bigger. Um, 6P parts on one fret for the standard kit. If you get the deluxe version, then you get 94 PE parts on two frets, you get eight brass barrels, and you get some brass rod as well to redo the masts with. Um, also available separately for this kit is a masking sheet um, that I'll also show you in this review. It does not come as part of the kit. Overall, as you'll see when we go through the instructions, the detail is up to Flyhawk's usual high standard. And just to clarify, um, Flyhawk give you decals for four ships of the L-Class, and this is the four anti-aircraft destroyers. 
Um, so you can do any one of these four ships, and those are HMS Lance, Gurkha, Lively, and Legion. And you can tell they were in the thick of the action since all four of them were sunk during the war. In fact, all of them went down in 1942. Step one is pretty straightforward. You decide whether you can do the full hull or the waterline version, and you put the deck on top. And there's plenty of nice detail on those decks as well. That's where your masking sheet, if you want to purchase it separately, that's where that is going to come in really useful. Step two is working at the foc'sle. Um, use the photo etch um, brass chain and you put together the first of the uh, the turrets with the Heinkel guns. Then moving to step three, we're working on the bridge and fitting one of the anti-aircraft guns and other small parts onto the bridge. Then down to step four and again using um, some of one of the photo etch parts and then we're actually putting some of the big pieces amidships onto the main hull along with one of the other um, main guns. Then move to the right in step five and we're putting the main mass together. And then over the page we're putting um, the quad um, pom-pom anti-aircraft gun together, put the funnel together and uh, the ship's boats. And then we move to step seven where basically we're fitting those parts onto the ship, so reasonably straightforward. Then on to step eight, and we're working at the aft end of the ship. The last two uh, main turrets go on, along with some of the smaller parts. And then to step nine, we're fitting the torpedo tubes and the assembly from part eight. We fit that in place. And then step 10, the last step of actually building, we're fitting depth charge racks, depth charge throwers, and other small parts at the very back end of the ship. Okay, so what we've covered so far is what's inside the basic version of the kit. Now I'll talk about the photo etch and the extra little bits you get on the deluxe version. So you get an extra two frets of um, photo etch and some brass barrels and some brass rod. So obviously the brass barrels replace the plastic gun barrels. Photo etch replace is quite a few parts and some extra parts uh, to add more detail. Um, it replaces some anti-aircraft guns, uh, ladders, uh, the breakwater on the front, the depth charge um, rails are replaced, and also use the brass rod to replace most of the ship's mast as well, which is pretty neat. And then over the sheet what we have is we uh, remove um, some detail from the funnel cap and replace it with some thinner photo edge, add some ladders in various places, and obviously there's a complete set of ship's rails um, to go as well. So overall, it adds a fair amount of detail to the ship in addition to replacing some plastic. And then on to the painting and marking guide and the decals. Um, the colours are called out by name um, by Mr. Hobby, Tamiya and White Ensign. Um, reasonably straightforward um, colour scheme. Um, the deck has... Um, I think there's actually rubberized walkways on it. So that's where the masks will come in really useful because it take, it um, helps you get those painted easily without having to do a ton of masking yourself. Other than that, reasonably straightforward and a nice clear painting guide. And as I mentioned earlier, the decal sheet covers four ships. Um, so even though it says HMS Legion on the box top, you can actually do Lance, Gurkha, Lively as well. Um, so that's pretty neat. You can sort of get four of them and do the four sister ships all together. And Ark Royal, there was another one of the L-Class, I forget exactly which one right now, another one was there as well, so you could do a nice diorama with Ark Royal and two of the L-Class alongside. One extra you can get for this kit, in addition to buying the deluxe set of the kit, is a masking sheet. Um, Legion had basically yeah, like a rubberized walkway in places um, and they were a different color to the rest of the deck. So um, hand painting and hand masking um, could be a bit of a pain um, in this small scale. So with this what you do is simply paint everything one color then put the masking set down and it covers a fair portion of the ship actually including the walkways and one of the walkways has a, has a curve on it as well. And then just spray over the top of it and you're done. It should make painting the decks correctly 
um, a much faster job. So it's probably um, going to be worth your time to grab a hold of one, if you're, especially if you're going to do a few of these, you might be able to reuse the, uh, the masking set. So an overall conclusion, the um, basically the level of detail is up to Flyhawk's usual standards, which are pretty damn high. Um, there's lots of fine details, lots of small parts. Um, you're going to be about 200 parts of plastic for a 1 700th destroyer is pretty insane. Um, add on to that 90 odd parts of photo etch that admittedly replaces some other plastic. So you, you'll use all the 90 parts of photo etch and not use some other plastic. It's the first time I can see that anybody's done an L class in plastic as well. So I'm guessing this is going to be pretty popular with um, people who are into building ships of the Royal Navy. Um, this bodes well for, I should say, the other ships of the L-Class coming along shortly, since the only real change would be the main armament, and also the M-Class as well, which was very similar to the L-Class. Uh, they followed the mod down the production lines. So all in all, should be should do well. It's a really nice kit. And many thanks to Flyhawks for sending it along for us to have a look at.